Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the Plapper. Platypus is the name, and yes, we are ranking every single job today. Now, over to my other monitor here. I do have a cheat sheet. I ran through this already because it was actually a little more complicated than I thought. Um, there's a lot to consider between the skills, the weapons, the armors, things like that. Um, so a couple things before we jump into it. One, I don't have perfect knowledge. I'm going to do my best. This is my opinion from having beat the game, getting ready to go into New Game Plus and Legendary Difficulty. I have not done that yet. But after 70-ish hours on my first playthrough, I think I can at least say what has seemed good to me and what hasn't. Um, we're not going to... I'm going to try to keep the video relatively digestible. So this isn't going to go into like a super, super deep with every single you know, nuanced decision. I'm going to kind of give a little bit of a brief overview over why I like that. And then we'll try to keep it moving. That way you guys can get in, get out and yell at me. And then we'll just move on. Anyway, <clears throat> without further ado, also, we're likely to ruffle some feathers. All right. There's been jobs that people really seem to like that I think are total dog crap and jobs that maybe there's jobs I like that you guys think are dog crap. So let's jump into it. First, freelancer. This is so it's going to be top to bottom, left to right. Oh, sorry. Very, very first uh, D tier, the worst tier at all. We are going to put the tennis ace and we're going to put the linebacker. Now, this is purely because these are paid DLC. I haven't used them. I don't plan on using them. And that's just it's whatever. They're pro they're probably good. People say they're amazing and they're broken. That's fine. I haven't needed them yet. I don't really feel like using them because let's say someone watches this video uh, three months from now, and they just bought the base game, and they don't have these, and they don't want to spend extra money to get these, then I don't, you know, it, it's not really relevant to their experience. So we're just going to pretend that those don't exist for the most part by put them in D tier for don't buy or whatever. I don't care. I was just mostly a joke. And then so it'll be top to bottom, left to right. So freelancer, I think this is probably the worst job in the game. Why? Um, a lot of his attacks can miss. There's a lot of ways to that they'll either like, oh, they'll either miss or they'll get crits. You you're not <laughs> double or nothing is not good in a JRPG most of the time. Um, usually you would rather do normal damage with a chance to crit. And I think even if it does hit, they're not guaranteed crits. So it's just most of his abilities are bad. They're like, you know, the lack of a weapon is a pretty significant uh downgrade. You know, the fact that you can't have weapon effects is pretty bad. A lot of grapple attacks, but not really any elements. Just overall, not that good. Um, no unique weapon, no uh, unique armor necessarily. It's Kasuga's armor um, for all, like, you know, that's basically what I would consider that. And uh, his armor is not that good. So I think it's probably the weakest class in the game. Now, on the inverse, Hero. Hero is an easy S tier. I actually do have the game pulled up here as well. If we want to take a look at some of this stuff. Let's take a look. Let me get to hello work here or whatever, you know, whatever bebop. Um, so if we look at hero here, I mean, just tons of great abilities, basically. It, this is just like a perfect hero is really uh, aptly named. Um, lots of support, lots of good damage, healing, you know, healing, support, damage, survivability, the ability to revive himself if he goes down while doing good damage. Um probably the one of the best weapons in the entire game with its ability to do extra lightning damage hits after enemies get knocked around and stuff just an insanely good all-around class for the entire game and you could use this no problem easy peasy basically the whole game insane sujimancer i'm also going to put in the s tier now this one's a little bit different there's downsides to sujimancer there is no weapon like the freelancer and the armor is also bad because it's Kasuga's default armor. And it's like, okay, but it's not like super broken or anything. And uh, the thing is, it has an, it can cover all the elements. You know, it could, co it could do to an extent because it has good heavy fire, lightning, and ice. It can also sometimes sleep. It can sometimes poison. Those last two are kind of iffy. But more importantly, it has really powerful AoE attacks. And it could exploit the weaknesses while also having a AoE revive everybody move, which is insane. It's the only one that does that in the game. Can pick up all of your teammates and revive them. It's just that's insanely powerful. And um, 
I honestly think it's mostly on the revivability, but it does a lot of damage too. Um, and it's the lack of a weapon sucks, but it does mean it scales pretty well while you're playing the game. It doesn't spike as much, you know, where it's like when you're playing a normal character, like let's say a samurai, you know, it'll be like, you'll be doing damage here. Then you'll suddenly go upgrade your weapon or find a new weapon. Then you'll just, boom, I'm doing tons more damage. You'll go like, get a huge damage increase and then it kind of levels off again where the Suji are just kind of always gaining damage. So it scales with the game pretty well. Homeless guy. I think this is going to be the first good, not this is, I won't say broken, but these are great, good, average, bad. Um, let's, you know, let's, let's change. I mean, that's what it means, but I don't know. Great, good, okay, bad. Um, homeless guy, I think most of the initial classes are, like the the job exclude character exclusive jobs are not that good. Um, I mean they're fine, they're fine. But I think homeless guy really stands out. It's got some sick abilities. One of the things I think it has above everything else, it has some weaknesses too. Its main weakness, in my opinion, is that everything it does is fire based. Is that literally everything it does is fire based? Um, it doesn't cover any other elements. So you need to go like level up a host and bring over some uh ice or like because there's not really even a chance to get lightning then you got to go to the aquanaut and get like jellyfish juice just to get some form of lightning because there's just not that much lightning in the game in general um one of the things that i really like about the cavi is that it has some good lightning stuff but pretty much everything is fire but if an enemy is not resistant to fire this is probably arguably the best class in the game it's up there because one, these are AoE magic attacks that also apply your uh, tributes of your weapon. So his ultimate weapon is really what brings us all together, right? So they've got insanely powerful attacks, and that's basically it. It's pretty much the best AoE damage dealer in the game, bar none. Um, Essence, a big-ass bird. Giant, you know, damage. Uh, Essence, a pyro prison. Lots of damage can burn him. But really, the reason why I'm even bringing him up and why I think he's so good is if you come to his weapon here, of course, you know, this is not all from experience, but I mean, you could, I could read. Um, the Scepter of Oblivion. Attack and weapon skills may lower the enemy's fire resistance. That's already good. That means all these magic attacks that you're doing primarily for damage can also lower fire resistance. Uh, Tomi has an ability that could do this, but it's a specific ability, not something that's going to be tied to your AoE. So this could do massive AoE fire resistance and it boosts your magic damage the more enemies there are so the more enemies there are the stronger he gets so if you're going up against a single target this is likely not insane um but it will be a little bit of a boost um and magic damage but besides that it just best best aoe magic dealer in the game we don't need to go into it more than that all right let's um i don't want you guys to see the spoiler list there you can see the spoiler list but we'll, we'll try to get it away adashi it's okay. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. The um, ability to guard and reflect damage is like cool, but it's only with this specific weapon. And uh, here's the thing. I think it would be good if it wasn't for the fact that the dragon of Dojima is in the game. I think that it's just like a really bad version of that. It could instantly KO things. There's a lot of things that could do that kind of stuff. It's not amazing. All right. The dragon of dojima class also i think suji mancer might be better than hero mm, it's close i'm not sure how i'm going to rank these ones yet these ones might be all kind of equal um dragon of dojima insane job now the caveat is it's not insane at the start of the game you have to kind of get it fully awakened um and it just it just kind of busted the armor is good um the dragon of dojima armor i don't even remember which one uh it, it, it's not the dragon of dojima armor right it's the um it's kasuga it's kiryu it's kiryu's armor so if we take a look at kiryu here um you know extra perfect guards increases the input window for perfect guards you combine this with something like the um though not the water gods amulet it's the uh water is this ordered by newest it should be okay so there, there's something called the the wisdom king warrior god what's it called is it the water sea gods right perfect guards now evade attacks entirely decreases the input window for perfect guards so it kind of in so it makes it so you know 
they're not necessarily synergistic, but like you can increase the window and then decrease the window. So you're kind of back at the normal and then you just completely evade attacks. But still being able to uh, reduce damage from perfect guards will also be able to increase the input window. We'll also be able to counterattack. We'll also be able to grapple and do extra damage and do this and do heat actions. It's just, it's kind of an insane job. So um, it's just going to be busted in general. Cabby, this is even better. I need my cheat sheet. But I think I think this is even better than the homeless man. The homeless man has a lot of weak has the weakness in the sense that it's only fire and it's really good at AOE, but it's not necessarily the best single target one because um, you don't do that much sustainable extreme damage. But it is still very good. But this is about the cabbie. The cabbie is uh, busted. It's just skills. Its skills are all busted. Now there is a it has some lightning damage, AOE lightning damage, but it's got a lot of ways to lower defense. Um, lower an enemy's, you know, resistance to fire, lower their resistance to electricity. It's got some of the only good electricity attacks in the game. It's got a great weapon that also lowers it. Now, I do think the cabby falls off, and I tend to, I switch the cabby for other abilities later. Um, I, I just basically take the cabby abilities and move them around. So it's a kind of weird thing about gauging the classes because you could take almost all the skills off of a class onto another or one job to another. I think it's jobs is great, but I think I would typically have a host over a cabby because you can have just the best of both worlds. Basically you can have the skills of a cabby with having the stats of a host, which is more magic. Eris. I mean, these classes are all fine. They're just kind of like a little bit of utility. Um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, little healing, little damage, little magic, nothing that crazy, a little state, like little support, not that good. The assassin, I think it's kind of the same, a little more damage focus, not that much support can kind of debilitate foes, but it really doesn't do anything that I would consider broken. Um, unless I miss something there barmaid, these ones are kind of the same. I actually would go, I forgot. I'm sorry. Barmaid. I think this one's bad. I think this one offers basically nothing good um i don't want to get too too into it but let's just take a quick look at it really quick right like, might as well all right barmaid is psycho right just a little bit of damage the damage isn't anything crazy you know a little bit of magic and the buff is like this is fine this is an okay ability to have but this is a you know a dime a dozen ability it's kind of all over the place it feels like at least on uh, maybe more male characters, I suppose, the male jobs. Um, decreasing attack of enemies, this could fail, so this is usually a waste of a turn. Um, these aren't, like, great damaging abilities. This isn't a very good damaging attack. So it's all just kind of like, and she does have the revive a fallen thing, but here's the thing. This ability is literally already on the idle, so it just doesn't really offer anything. Now, the ice attack is maybe kind of good, but it's just... I don't even remember what the weapon does. I need to relook at the weapon because I saw it and I wasn't super impressed with it. So let's kind of go up to the barmy. It's um increase the MP cost of skills and boost skill damage. No, thank you. No, thank you. Um, I just don't think that's what I want to be doing. I, I don't, I typically don't like increasing the MP cost of skills anyway, unless it's like if it increases it by 20% and it doubles the damage, then we can start talking. I don't know exactly the damage increase it is, but usually when you're using skills in on hard boss fights and they have a lot of HP, sustain is a problem for a while. You got to make sure you have enough sustain to keep it going. I'm trying not to watch this fucking game. I know you are too. Gangster. Um, Gangster is good. Gangster has a few very, very key abilities that I think make it very good. So I think you actually, if you're sleeping on Gangster, you shouldn't because I have been sleeping on Gangster because I don't like Zhao that much. I think he's kind of like a whatever mid character, but... He has, uh, so a couple things that are pretty good here, right? Um, like, I mean, he does some good damage. Um, he has a good, he has a pretty good weapon. I kind of like that he has a heavy attack that could boost his own attack. So this is already kind of what you want to be doing. It's heavy damage. It boosts your attack. If you're going to do something that does light damage and boost your attack, I think that's kind of bad. But really, I think you want to get this home cooked dim sum. I think this is like potentially really good. It is warms him and nearby allies bellies it grants them hp recovery over time so you could use this right at the start of a fight and it gives them resistance to status ailments now there's certain characters in certain classes that can just remove all status ailments but being able to prevent them in the very first place from happening is even better i think so i actually think home cooked dim sum is an ability that makes him very very good potentially um as far as the weapon 
I had it. I had it pulled up. I had it pulled up, and then I lost it. So we're just gonna look at it really quick. Um, the gangster weapon. Ignore all resistances. I don't love that. Um, but I do like this top end damage dealing, and I really, really like that home cooked dim sum. I actually think that ability is kind of uh, nuts so but so. So um, hitman. I think hitman is fine. I think it's one of the better fine classes. The the thing is, I'm kind of like. It, it depends on how big the boss arena is, which is annoying. And the positioning of things. You don't have a super good control over the positioning of things. But here's the thing. If you can, like, get behind them, he has this great attack that lets him hit something for medium damage. It gets a guaranteed crit, and then it does a second hit. So it's, like, really good. And then he has this attack that, like, the less enemies there are, the higher you are to crit, and it does more damage. So it has a lot of good potential, but it's... I feel like there's a lot of things you can't control that make it suddenly weaker. If you can't get behind an enemy, it's a bit weaker. And its base stats aren't that good. So I'd probably take the one or two good abilities onto a different class and then use it when you can instead of trying to do a whole build around this. But it does have a pretty cool uh, weapon about um, it does like more damage the more status ailments are on a character. It's kind of a sub theme. I don't think that's super good, but I, I, I don't think it's terrible either. That's why I just put it as like, okay. Host, I think host is potentially in the great, but I think that's a little optimistic for me. I think I'm going to put it in the top of good. Um, this is based a lot on, it's just the best magic damage dealer out of the generic job classes or the jobs. But also its armor is kind of fucking nuts. If you come look at its armor, I think this is one of the main things that makes it good. Do I have a host right now? No, but let's say I go to... Let's just look at it. All right. We'll just look at it. Sorry. Go boom, boom, boom. I know the buttons. I know the buttons. So do you. Um, the number one jacket. This gives you resistance to blunt blade and gun damage. So this gives you resistance to the three physical dam All physical damage you have resistance to. On top of the class already has resistance to ice. So you have resistance to four of the six damage types just by being a host. It also gives you a little bit of extra magic, which is cool. And relatively, like, not good defenses. Like, they're not insane, but, like, they're they're fine defenses. And then it just has a bunch of good attacks. It has probably the best magic damage thing where it doubles the strength of your next ability. Um, where it's like, you drink this, your next magic attack is going to do double damage, which is usually better than doing damage twice. Because, one, it saves MP at minimum. Two, it means you could use, you know, you, you, it gives your team more turns to debuff the enemy or buff you. So if your first turn you drink this and you have no magic buff, the next time a turn your turn comes around, maybe you got two magic buff and they have a debuff to their willpower. Suddenly you're doing more than you would have done with two attacks, you know, um, and you're using less MP. So those kinds of things are all pretty good. Um, I My main boy here has been a host almost the entire game. Um, it's just, well, not almost, not the entire game, but great attacks, great attacks. Honestly, an essence of Rose Typhoon's pretty good. A chance to charm and burn together. I've had it be pretty good. I think I undersell this a little bit, like status elements on other attacks. I don't like attacks that are, you use to get status elements on enemies because it could fail and it could suck. I don't want to do less damage to try to get a status ailment. However, when I'm just doing damage and sometimes as a bonus, I could also get status ailments. That's pretty darn good. Wonder cocktails what I was talking about. You gotta be careful. It does make you a little bit drunk and you can lose control of your character if you do it too many times. Um, overall, just a great class. Um, I don't really use most of these support things. Maybe you wanna boost the magic every now and then, um, but it's just pretty good. Uh, I would say it's, I don't know if it's better than Cabby outside of the fact. I think it's better than Cabby because Cabby has, oh, I think, honestly, better skills, but it has worse equipment, you know, worse armor um, and survivability, I think, becomes a thing. So I just take all the Cabby skills, put it on the host. You have higher magic, higher survivability, uh, pretty much the same eight or less, you know, same or more HP rather. Um, so I think host is just like combined with the Cabby is really good. Kind of the same with the homeless man thing. Um, the issue is the homeless man actually has a fucking really good weapon. A really good weapon. Even though Nama's armor is not that good, that uh, that weapon, I think, is badass. Uh, Breaker, here's the one that I think people are going to get mad about. I think Breaker is fucking trash. I think it's a bad class. Uh, there, It has... The only potential it has, in my opinion, is that it could have the... 
like the random uh it has you can give yourself three stages of agility with an ability that's pretty good if it's really that good you just take that one ability put it somewhere else the rest of the class i think is kind of just kind of wonky let's look at the weapon that's the one thing that i don't remember that well it was the weapon um because i just don't use it that much recover mp when you receive a buff this is inherently powerful but it's inherently powerful on a bad class in my opinion so it's like i don't want to do that the armor like increases the duration of buffs that's kind of bad all their all their attacks are like deal light damage or deal medium damage and give yourself some irrelevant buff yeah you could boost your agility boost your agility boost your agility yeah, you can, like, boost your attack, boost your attack, but you're doing light damage to boost your attack or light damage to boost your agility. And then y you can go fast, but I just feel like you're just kind of an average to bad damage dealer, and I don't really like it. Um, it's not for me. I don't like that class. Chef, I think, is okay. I think Chef kind of suffers from the fact that it doesn't really excel at anything. I think it's uh, kind of... It's just, eh, you know? I... I don't know how else to say it. It's just like, it does okay physical. It does okay magical, but it's selection of magical attacks aren't that good. It's selection of physical is fine. It kind of is like this. You want to make them bleed and then burn the bleed kind of thing. Like remove their thing. Their armor was, um, let me take a look at their armor again really quick. I, I just forgot it off the top of my head. Um, chance of critical hit buff at the start of your turn. I mean, that's probably the best part about them is that armor. Honestly, I like the critical hit buffs. I just think like it comes around, like it's good. It's not great. I mean, so, I mean, it, but it's like, it's, it's also worse than other, so it's not as good at the host as dealing magic damage, it's not as good as the cabbie is dealing magic damage, it's not as good as the samurai is doing physical damage, and so it's just like, I don't know, for me, it just never, it never really clicked as being a great class. Samurai, I think samurai is safely in the A tier, probably right at the top, or right, right about the top, is probably the best physical damage dealer potentially um it's it's at least it's probably tied um i think that the uh the samurai has insane armor increases its agility your agility based on the number of enemies its ultimate weapon kind of sucks it just makes it so enemies debuffs last longer and i've just never had that seem relevant i would much rather have it so the sword can apply bleed or just do more damage or get crits on bleeding targets i don't know something the weapon, I think, kind of sucks, but really it all comes down to it just does a lot of damage with a really good armor. Yes, it's got a lot of cool appeal. It's actually kind of bad at applying bleed. It has a lot of attacks that can't apply bleed. Um, the chef is better at applying bleed in general, so I usually will have like one ability from the chef to apply bleed if I really need to. Um, so you kind of have to build around the samurai at least a little bit. It's not super good if you're not bleeding the target because you're losing a lot of damage. Um, and so it, it, this is what's tough. I think the samurai does arguably the best damage with insanely good armor, but if you're not building around it, you're not applying bleed, you're going to have a bad time. Or if you are applying bleed, but then suddenly you have a character with a fire weapon and they catch them on fire, that'll overwrite the bleed, the poison, you know, overwrite the bleed. So you got to be careful. You got to be super careful and kind of have a team with knowing you have a samurai around. Um, so that definitely is a knock against it, but I still think it's like fucking insanely powerful overall. Action Star, I think Action Star is probably, right, it's, it's going to be right about here. Um, good damage dealer, that's all it does. It has good chances to crit. It's got good, uh, you know, grapple abilities. It can raise its own agility, which I used to think was better. I'm not as into it now as I used to be, mostly because um, even with full agility buffs, it's hard to really, really outspeed enemies to the point where it gets completely broken, um, unless you're already so overleveled where it doesn't really matter that much. Um but I mean, it's just, it's just good. It does a lot of damage. That, that's kind of it. I think it doesn't have as, you don't have to worry about it as much as the samurai. Um, but I do think that it, it's also does. I think it really doesn't do quite as much damage as the samurai, but the trade off is you can kind of just throw it in. You don't need to really think about it. It does have this really, really good armor that makes it so it can't be CC'd. You don't get any, uh, restrictive status ailments and it gives you a little bit of, a uh, extra damage. I think it is. And um, its ultimate weapon was, ugh, I, I I don't remember. I these are ones that I right, I looked at all these before I started, and it clicks. But it's hard for me to keep all these weapons and their specific abilities in my mind at any time. Um, greatly strengthens physical attacks, increased damage received from enemies. Double edged sword. Um, I like this on Namba because Namba's armor makes him likely to survive. It 
still doesn't feel like it out damages the samurai to me. That's maybe that's subjective. Maybe this is better than the samurai because it out damages it. I just haven't really felt it out damaging the uh, the character yet. Aquanaut. Someone in one of my comments said you got to try the Aquanaut. I haven't taken any of their skills off, um, and I got to be honest. I think Aquanaut is the second worst job in the game. And maybe Barmaid is worse. I don't know. Um, I think it's just, I didn't like any of its abilities at all. The one thing the Aquanaut does that I like is it lowers ice resistance. I do think that's kind of cool. And I might be willing to run one ability from the Aquanaut to lower ice resistance. Because I do, I mostly play with magic, a magic uh, focus team. Which might kind of give you a view into what I do. I don't use that many physical classes. I tend to stick with magic. Um, their lightning ability kind of sucks. Most of their physical attacks kind of suck. Um, their ultimate weapon was pretty cool. I like the ability to reduce ice damage. It's um, armor, attacks ignore resistances, whatever. I don't really care. Um, I just think it's bad. I, I, I might want to take one skill from it and move it over. But it's not even like a necessary skill. It's more just like something that I think could be useful sometimes that I probably wouldn't even end up using. Desperado. This one is the biggest surprise to me. If you would have asked me two days ago, I would have put it in the bad tier. Because having a whole class based around dealing debuffs, I think is kind of dog poopy. You don't want to have to rely on your attacks getting a secondary effect on bosses that could be immune to it. Or it could just be really hard to land it on. Or... Maybe it's like they're just not that impactful, you know, in general. You want, like, and even then, it's like the payoffs are low. However, I think it might be one of the, I think it might be the single best damage dealer in the game. And this is solely coming down to its incredible weapon, basically. Um, its armor kind of sucks, increases the status duration on weapons, or on, it's increased the status duration on enemies. Whatever. That's like, okay. Um, but this weapon here is so fucking good, in my opinion. Boost crit rate on, uh, you know, on enemies to 30% per ailment on them. It's not that hard to get some ailment on enemies. That means this weapon can get, if you have two ailments, which I don't think is impossible, and you have the brand on this, that um, you can get the brand that gives it 20% per ailment. That means two ailments on it will give you guaranteed crits with your first brand. Your second brand could be increased crit damage. Your third brand could be increased crit damage or increase whatever, you know, um, increase piercing damage or whatever. Um, so you can get guaranteed crits on this class very easily. And honestly, all things considered, it's like not even um, the actual attacks. Who, who Who's my gunslinger? I think it's Kiryu. Um, if you come over here to the gunslinger skills, like they have a lot of like, this does extreme damage with a chance of KO. And if they're suffering an ailment, which is kind of what we're trying to build around too. So if you're able to silence enemies, this will do even more damage, right? Um, it just got like pretty decent attacks, but I think the pretty good damage combined with, that has one of the highest base attacks. It is the same base attack strength as a action star which is not quite as high as the Samurai, but it's just like one, you know, pip below it. So it's about equal to the Action Star in base stats. I think that combined with extreme damaging abilities, heavy damaging abilities with the chance to do additional stuff um, and guaranteed crits, I think that's kind of nuts. I haven't fully experimented with this, so it's a little more of a thought experiment than it is a in-practice experiment, but I actually think that it is pretty, potentially the best physical damage dealer in the game. Um, and I'm really sorry to do this three days ago. I would have put this up here. I actually am going to put the pyro dancer all the way down in bed. I think it's just kind of falls off. It's abilities kind of suck. It has the ability to give you 50% crit chance when you are at one HP or like really low to HP and it's armor can make it. So it's e easier to not die and it can kind of self heal, but playing the, the low HP, almost dead thing gets worse and worse for me the longer the game goes on because you just want to keep yourself topped off pretty much all the time because you're in danger of getting one shot. And you don't want to play, you know, in Darkest Dungeon, you have a death saving throw, you know, where it's like, oh, you don't always die if you go down to zero HP, but you still don't want to just play at zero HP, man, most of the time. Like, 
I don't want this character character to be almost dead constantly trying to maximize their damage. And most of their damage is kind of like it's good, but their survivability is so low combined with their damage not being that much better than other classes. They have some utility. Like they can you can get the ability to give themselves three buffs of attack. You can kind of do that kind of but overall, I think their final weapon kind of sucks. I think their armor kind of sucks. I think most of their abilities are average at best. Um and like the like the I like the mask, the one that does lightning damage, but I just take that off. You know, I just get that one ability and I move it on. Idle. Idle, this is the hardest one for me to judge. I'm gonna put it as okay, but that's that's fighting two things. I think it's got some of the best skills in the game, probably some of the most essential skills, the best healing. You know, it's got revive, it's got aoe heal it's got aoe status removal it's got you know buffs this kind of stuff is like does that buffs or does debuffs i think the idol has debuffs um it has the ability to charm and lower defense and stuff so it has like it's like the best healer and it has revive so you can move it to other people but i would never ever stay as the idol i would just get level up the idol get those abilities move them to a different one its armor increases the healing effectiveness of skills all my skills always cap out my HP always the heals like overheal my HP. Maybe if my HP pools get so high that it, it becomes irrelevant, like I'm at 9,000 HP and I can only heal a thousand or something. I don't know. Then maybe that becomes really good. But as of through the end of the game through level 75 it's dog shit. I don't want that armor. It's completely irrelevant. As far as the um, equipment here, the, the, the baton. Bum, 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 bum. Where's it at? Idle. There it is. It's the very bottom one. Uh, chance of a magic buff for the start of your turn. This is good, but this is actually really good. I won't lie. I really, really like this, but I don't think it's insane. I think because the idol doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, like, if we look at the... Uh, where, where's my lady friends here? Until it's perfect. The idol has, like, good magic. And it just... I don't know. It's just like, I wouldn't stay the idol for, for one main reason. I think the idol could be a really good class. Um, but I actually think the main reason is I let's do this one first. I think, uh, the knight class, I think this one's bad. It's just a very bad physical damage dealer. Doesn't really bring much utility. It tries the charm and stuff, but again, I don't feel like the damage it deals is that good. I don't like its armor at all. I don't like its weapon. Um, it has a chance to instantly KO things the lower their HP gets. I don't know. Is that good? I think it could be good, but I mean, I haven't really experimented with it that much. So it's, I to me, I lean towards that being bad. I didn't like the damage output. I feel like the men's jobs were just better at the physical damage output. Whether or not that was just because I didn't have the best weapons on the Night Queen, I don't know. Um, But the main reason why I never stay as an idol is because... I think these are the three best potential jobs in the game right here. First, Kunoichi. I think this is easy S tier. It's it, it, substitution jutsu is probably the best ability in the entire game. It's this is the fastest class, fastest job with probably the best ability in the entire game. The ability to make any character go next. Um, and it's even better than that because like you don't you you take whatever spot in the initiative they have. So it's even better. It's like you're if you have a turn timer that goes from zero to 100, this doesn't bring you back to zero. This puts you back if your teammate you're at 100 because you're going and your teammates at 50, it puts you back to 50, you know, so it's even better. You don't even use a full turn to use this you use like a partial turn. So you actually can get out more turns faster by using this kind of stuff. Um, the damage is actually kind of busted. But you kind of have to really focus on the damage if that's what you're doing. You got to boost your agility multiple times and then use Illusionary Slash. But I mean, it. like I had someone in my chat tell me they did 12,000 damage with that ability, right? You get the agility buffs, you get the attack buffs, you get the defense downs on them. You know, maybe you have an elemental weapon um, and then suddenly you're just fucking blowing stuff up. Um, it, it just, I think it's maybe not, it, it, I think it's potentially, I, first of all, I think this is probably better than Sujimon. I think... I think Dragon of Doji was probably the best one in the game. I think I think it's at least close. It's kind of hard for me to judge these ones, but I think that that's how I'd put it, at least for now. 
Um, what exactly does the armor do again? It's not, it's not one I usually use. Increase the duration of buffs and debuffs you cause. So increasing the duration of your buffs is okay. I, the reason I think the armor is kind of good is because I think it gives you more agility, which is awesome. And making your agility buffs last longer is just good. And it's actually more important on this character than it is on other characters because you have a, um, you have so many turns that your debuffs feel like they fall off faster. Like they fall off in less turn cycles than your other characters because you take more turns. So like if Tommy gets, you know, four turns of magic up and you get four turns of agility up, you're going to get it. Yours is going to still run out essentially faster. Uh, this, the housemaid is got, is fantastic. They have probably one of the most powerful abilities which is to remove debuff remove buffs from enemies and they have it on multiple really good attacks too um very very powerful abilities they're great magic dealers they've actually got surprisingly good survivability and their armor gives them magic buffs at the start of every turn their weapon which i don't remember right now but i am currently using on my character if i go to my gear for my housekeeper which I was leveling jobs, so I don't have. So we're going to keep talking. We're going to go over here to the smartphone. I said I was going to make this video short. There's just a lot to talk about here. Um, boost damage to enemy weaknesses. So you're getting magic buffs at the start of your turn, right? I'm not getting that confused. Yeah, chance of a magic buff at the start of your turn, and you're boosting damage to enemy weakness. And you have some of the better attacks, and you've got pretty good survivability. I actually think that like I could move this up to a... And you can remove buffs. I think that this could be S tier. I think that it's, I think that it could be that good. Yeah, I think that's where we're going to put it. And then finally, Geomancer, Geodancer. I think Geodancer is also in the S tier. I actually think it's better than Housemaid, even though I just went on that, right, that uh, big old thing. I just, everything about this class is fucking sick. It's got probably my favorite weapon in the game. Like straight up, it's probably got my favorite weapon in the game, right? Chance of a magic buff at the start of your turn, and you recover HP whenever you get a buff. So I see, look, I'm a little biased. I've been using this on Chitose, whose armor gives her mana whenever she gets a buff. So just randomly every turn, she just starts, she just starts, she, she has infinite mana, infinite HP. Like she could heal herself by buffing the whole team. And she's doing great damage because her magic buff is getting uh kicked up. What is their actual um thing? Boost magic damage at max HP. That could be good too. I like getting infinite MP, um, but still the armor is fine. But I think what really kind of sets it apart is that the skills are so good. Like pretty much every one of these skills is like some of the best skills in the entire game. Let's um, let's go to Chitose who actually has them all. But like boosting AOE magic, this isn't insane. This is never why you would take this class. But I because of the inherent synergy with the weapon, this can also heal yourself. Um, being able to boost your evasion, this is whatever. The, the, these these two are the two that I use the least. Um, Honolulu hips, right? You could lower enemies' willpower, which is debuffing them while dealing some damage. Uh, this is my favorite defensive ability. You give everyone willpower and evasion. If you have mage boots and you make it so all your defenses are coming from willpower, suddenly this is giving everyone survivability, increasing their willpower, and now all damage types are reduced. And you could also get them a triple evasion. The only downside of this ability is that its area of effect is not quite big enough in big arenas to hit all your teammates. And that could be really annoying. They have a revive. Very, very powerful. It's got a um, the kick we don't use. We don't use the kick. And I also don't use the bounty. It has like a weird sleep ability. I've never done this. But the, this corkscrew ability is so fucking good. It doesn't say it here, but this is a knockback. Even though it's a knockback without a knockback. This is really good damage. And it always knocks back really far, like into a wall, even though it doesn't interact with your party members in that way. So you always get extra damage when it hits the wall. And then it frequently lowers the enemy's willpower. So you're dealing damage and it makes it so you deal more damage in the future. Now, uh, blossoming of whatever, this is an extreme damage attack and it's just normal. Like it's very good. This one just does a lot of magic damage. I usually end up using the one that lowers their willpower, but they've also got maybe the fucking best ultimate in the game besides the Suji Mancer, and that's recover HP of all allies and removes all their status ailments. It's all the healing, all the status ailments in one. The only thing it doesn't remove is debuffs, which you can counteract with buffs. 
you know if they lower your defense you don't even care because you're using willpower if they lower your willpower you could just undo that for your whole party while also healing yourself and recovering your own mana if they poison you blind you stun you this gets rid of all that the only time it doesn't work is if this character gets stunned and they miss their turn that sucks which is why i think the dim sum on the uh, on zao could be pretty good because then it could prevent it from happening in the first place but i just have some equipment on her that makes her unlikely to get any status ailments and then even the um essence of tropical tornado and again this is kind of like a even better aoe damage version of the corkscrew i think the damage might actually be a little bit less on a single target um but it's aoe and it lowers their willpower it's just like fucking everything about the class it, besides their armor is like actually insane i the housekeeper I thought was like fine and then I got a couple of those generic uh like non-elemental damage abilities that could debuff the enemies and suddenly the housekeeper got way better so it's um it just became like instantly one of my favorite classes and it's I I don't think I'll ever go without one of my party unless the survivability gets so bad that I have to switch all of her skills over to a more survivable class like the housekeeper and then I have to give up on the weapon, which I don't love. But, I mean, there are situations where I could see where like, maybe her base HP is too low. But I don't think so. As long as you play defensively, I think you'll be fine. But, yeah, that's going to be my final tier list. 41 minutes. Fuck. I was really hoping to get done in 10 minutes. There's just too much to talk about. And I even tried to speed it up. Ugh. Anyway, much love. Per platypus is per platypus. Let me know where you agree, where you disagree, why I'm wrong, why you're wrong. And, uh... We'll talk more in the comments. Peace out, friends. See you on the flip-flops. Bye.